Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. This is Mrs. Hawthorne's first visit to the School of Dentistry Clinic. Mrs. Hawthorne, what's your reason for coming? I have come to have some new dentures made, Doctor. Both upper and lower dentures? Yes, sir, both upper and lower. How long have you worn dentures? Well, my top dentures are about 38 years, and my bottom are around 20. These, your upper denture then was made before the lower denture? Yes, they were, Doctor. Was it remade when the new lower denture was made? I had my uh, own teeth for many years, and uh, this doctor made my um, upper plate, like I said, about 38 years ago in Dearborn. Yes. Then uh, you wore those, or that upper denture against your lower natural teeth right. for a period of time. Must have been about 18 years, is right, that right? Right, doctor. Then you lost your lower natural teeth, and a denture was made for your lower jaw. Yes, sir. That's right, Doctor. At that time, though, 20 years ago, only a new lower denture was made then. Is that correct? That's right, Doctor. I see. All right. Uh, do you have any general health problems, Mrs. Hawthorne? Nothing too much. I do have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Do you take... Occasionally, I have, yeah, under medication. You are under medication yes. for that. Do you know what the medications are that you're taking? Well, it was a little green pill. A little green pill. Uh-huh. And how many of those do you take daily? I took, um, I take one every morning. All right. Mm -hmm. How often do you have your blood pressure checked? About every few months. And how does it read? Does your doctor uh, report? My doctor, my examiner took it, I think it was around 175 over 85. Uh -huh. And it right. was taken last week. All right. Are you taking any other medications? No, sir. Do you have any other health problems? No other health problems, doctor. And how are you getting along with your present dentures? Oh, I, I like them very much. And but uh, I, I was getting a little bit worried. I thought I had that inflammation up above, and I was getting a little bit worried about it, and I wanted to be, you know, taken care of. All right. So I heard about this hospital. My son-in-law works up here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, this is the place I'm going to, and here I am. All right. Uh, now, when you say inflammation up above, uh, how did you become aware of that? Did well, it bother you? Did it hurt? Uh, no. Uh, it, it really didn't bother me very much, but I could feel it, and I, and I had sort of a I sense that I should do something. How did you feel it? With your tongue or? When I would clean my teeth and I put my teeth, in, they would, uh, you know, I would have a little trouble getting them in there because I, I felt that little inflammation there. Uh huh. The Did you ever look at loose. it? You looked at yes, it then and I you saw that the I skin was loose. The skin was loose and I, I, see. I knew it. Uh huh. But and uh, how long I, I ago? With it. Mm -hmm. oh, how long ago did you first oh, notice oh, that? Several, oh, probably eight or nine months ago. Mm -hmm. And Has there ever been pain associated with it at all? No pain. Has there ever been any discharge from no the area? No discharge. No, mm -hmm. no. Have there been any open sores associated with no, this sir. inflammation? No, doctor. Nothing. All right. Fine. Now Dr. Kerr will demonstrate the situation in the patient's mouth. This uh, is a very interesting uh, situation that Dr. Millard has uh, presented. Uh, with a uh, long history of the wearing of uh, a denture. And uh, we see uh, when we look in here that there's uh, soft folds of tissue which uh, start at the midline and uh, go back along the lateral aspect of the denture to the molar area. You also uh, see that uh, the denture is quite loose uh, as uh, we necessitate replacement of it uh, as we lift up the tissue. Uh, <clears throat> the denture, uh, you see, has uh, a color which is perhaps a little unusual today in that it is brown and uh, somewhat mottled. And as you uh, see this denture, it has a brown palette. 
It has uh, what used to be a pink uh, labial section, and uh, this is about the color that it was originally. Uh, and uh, this probably represents an area of uh, recent adjustment in which the discolored surface has been removed. Uh, this is uh, a classical vulcanite uh, denture, and uh, <coughs> this uh, is the type that was in vogue uh, at the time this uh, denture was made. Might want to demonstrate the relief chamber in the palate there. Yes, it has a, a relief chamber which uh, was uh, in vogue at one time and still is uh, even uh, with uh, acrylic dentures. Uh, this uh, relief chamber is oftentimes uh, contributory to the production of uh, palatal papillomatosis when the uh, dentures are uh, uh, mobile. The uh, lower denture uh, is uh, <coughs> one which uh, has uh, acrylic and uh, made therefore in a different area, or era I should say, and uh, it has had one uh, repair and replacement of uh, anterior teeth. Now, if we look at the mouse, if you'll retract uh, her cheek there, Dr. Millard, I think uh, we can perhaps see the area better. Just wet your lips with your tongue, Miss Buffner, mm -hmm. and then open wide. Now, uh, we can uh, see very well the uh, hyperplastic folds uh, which are present and uh, are numerous. Uh, this is the uh, ridge, the incisive papillae, and then a fold of tissue uh, which uh, is continuous uh, back into the molar area. Outside of that, uh, another fold which uh, apparently has a little bit of ulceration as is indicated by the exudate, and then still another fold. This is the reason, of course, that uh, she has difficulty in uh, seating her denture is because uh, uh, she doesn't always get it in the right fold. And uh, this uh, area here is uh, the one that is being impinged upon most and so has the superficial ulceration. And this is the one that uh, normally rides outside of her denture, but it's possible that this one also as she functions, uh, jumps outside, and so uh, you may see uh, <coughs> uh, different situations exist uh, in, in which the denture gets placed like this and is uncomfortable, and then uh, gets placed like this, but ultimately uh, the uh, folds of tissue uh, will adapt themselves to her uh, uh, functional activity. Uh, it's interesting to note that uh, she uh, has a, a fairly normal lower ridge and uh, almost nothing uh, is uh, demonstrated here uh, except the atrophy which goes with the long-term wearing of dentures. Can you just tip your chin, chin down as far as you can, Mrs. Hawthorne? The, the uh, <coughs> ridge you see is uh, uh, atrophic in the front, and uh, although uh, we don't demonstrate it well, it is even more atrophic posteriorly. Well, Dr. Millard, uh, that's an interesting uh, denture because uh, <coughs> you and I are probably the only ones that have seen such dentures. Yes, I think uh, in our student population, uh, that there are very few uh, among them who are going to see this kind of denture uh, currently. Uh, most of these have uh, been discarded and remade with the current methyl methacrylate uh, type of base material. This is quite a characteristic history, though, of uh, having worn an upper denture against uh, natural teeth, which has started the process uh, in the anterior area. And then, uh, even though uh, she's had those natural teeth gone for some time, uh, she's now uh, attributing to the process uh, with her lower denture. So that uh, this has simply been a, a continuation of something that started when she had only an upper denture. Yes. Uh, it's interesting, too, that uh, the upper denture was not made at the time the lower denture was made, probably an attempt to uh, uh, 
institute some economy in uh, going to the lower complete denture. However, uh, the uh, economy now uh, uh, becomes a moot point uh, because of the hyperplasia that we see uh, associated with this upper denture. Well, one of the problems, of course, uh, of making a lower against an upper is uh, uh, the obtaining of centric. Uh, but uh, whether there was or was not previously, there certainly is not anymore. I think uh, if we would reinsert the dentures and look at the relationship of the occlusion between the upper and lower jaw, we might be able to demonstrate uh, that something has taken place here, uh, at least we can assume it has, uh, that's altered the, the centric uh, relationships of these uh, two dentures. Let's go back to our retractors, Mr. Walker. Now, would you just bite together? I think perhaps if we just retract here that uh, will be a little easier to demonstrate this. Now just bite down. Uh, what has happened is the relationship has gone from one which uh, likely was an anterior end-to-end, -end, uh, you just tip your chin down a little bit, an end-to-end -end relationship to now one which is uh, a class three relationship, that is an anterior crossbite uh, between the upper and lower denture. Well now, uh, the problem is uh, surgical uh, preparation of her mouth to uh, provide uh, a satisfactory uh, upper ridge and uh, vestibule uh, for the acceptance of a new denture and then the construction of a new upper and lower denture. Yes, uh, I think uh, we should emphasize the importance of uh, submitting tissue of this nature that's uh, removed for the purpose of uh, establishing a better ridge, uh, submitting this tissue for a microscopic examination. It's also interesting to note that um, patients can uh, adapt uh, to uh, many situations and here uh, this patient has been able to adapt uh, to this for a period of uh, 25 years and uh, still uh, thinks she uh, functions very well as far as her denture is concerned. Right. I, I hope that the new denture that's made for her will function as well uh, in her mind as the old one has. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.